Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we're gonna be testing out a couple of new hot items on the market right now. I do have about seven to eight new items in front of me to try, which I'm super excited to do so. I have a nice mixture between drugstore and high end. And although this isn't a full face of first impressions, I hope you guys enjoy the video either way. If you are not subscribed to my channel, definitely make sure you subscribe. Also make sure that you're clicking that bell notification so you can be notified every single time I upload. And with that, we are just gonna jump right into the little tutorial and start digging into these new products because I'm super, super excited. So I think before we begin, I want to put on my e.l.f little eye tapes and they're about two to three dollars at Target. I haven't used these in a while so just to kind of get that crisp clean line just gonna place these on the outer parts of my eye and if I decide to do wing liner this will also like be very helpful and then I'm just gonna set my lids really quickly with a little bit of the Rimmel translucent powder. I did use the NARS soft matte concealer to prime my lids as I always do, but I like to dust on a light layer of translucent powder every once in a while just to set them down, but I don't feel like I always need to set my eyelids. It just depends, honestly. So I'm just gonna dust a light layer of this. So for today's eyeshadow palette, we're gonna be using the Jaclyn Hill and Morphe Volume 2 palette. This palette is super pretty. I knew immediately that I wanted this palette the minute I saw the color story on it. It's super pretty, super beautiful. Same packaging as her original Jaclyn Hill palette with Morphe. This one, however, is not the same. It's definitely very different. You got a lot more vibrant and colorful shades to work with versus being more neutral and everyday friendly. I mean, you can still create like an everyday look with this. You could create something very unique or you can create something nighttime appropriate. So I feel like just looking at the color story alone, I feel like the palette is gonna be very versatile. If you guys don't remember, this is her original Jaclyn Hill palette with Morphe. Well, not the original, original. This is with the new uh, Morphe logo, but nonetheless, the first launch. And just a quick reminder, this is what the initial palette looks like. This was a very popular palette, still a very nice color story. And as you can see, definitely one of my favorite palettes. So I'm hoping to love this palette as much as I loved this one, but we're just gonna have to test it all out and see. So I think for today's look, I'm gonna kind of stay within this area, kind of not so much like the purples. I don't know about the burgundies because as you can see the vibes of the shirt, orange. So we're gonna stay within this area somewhere. I think I'm gonna start with grabbing Comfort Zone and super pigmented from the pan right off bat. And I'm gonna blend this on the outer portion of my eye and bringing that into that crease area, but only on the outer part. And right off bat, like I said, super, super pigmented shadows, which I'm not mad at, I'm all here for. And just using circular motions to blend this. So as you guys can see, this shadow is definitely very pigmented uh, going on initially. And it does blend out very nicely once you just like buff it out with your blending brush. I literally only dipped into the pan once. And I can continue to build it up if I wanted to. But now I think I'm going to grab a little bit of fill in myself, which is like this bright orange shade right here. I'm gonna grab a little bit of that, tap it off. And I'm also gonna place this on, on the outer parts of my eye and then blend upward and into my crease. And I'm using that same blending brush to, that I used to begin with. This one's definitely very, very orange. I am gonna switch over to a different brush just because I feel like that one wasn't really dispersing that shade the way I wanted it to. This is just a Sonia Kashuk blending brush. I'm just gonna get right here in this crease and just blend all of this out. Not sure I really like that shade. I don't know, we're gonna have to see, girl. I'm not too certain about it right now. Initially, when I set the orange shade down, it's not as smooth flowing as the first shade that we put on. To me, it kind of went on a little patchy at first, but using this brush 
um, to blend everything out definitely makes it a lot better. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of Home Body, which is this brown tone shade right here, and I'm gonna place this on the outer part. I just wanna deepen this section a little bit more. I would like it a little bit more darker and intense. So I'm just gonna build this shadow up right here. This one's a really pretty, pretty shade. So just working on buffing and blending the shadow on the outer portion of my lid, kind of like halfway, and just really smoking this outer part of my eye out. Now I'm just gonna use this JH30 brush just to blend my outer corners or the outskirts of the eyeshadow. I really love the combination of all three of those shades together. It's just, it's really deep now, and that's what I wanted. Before it was just looking nice, it's, but it was like light and airy, and I wanted something a little more intense, so. So I do want to add a little bit more to the outer corner, but before I do that, I'm going to take Get Ready With Me, which is this nice shimmer right here. I know she said uh, there's a new formula or, of glitter in here, or shimmer, but I'm not really sure which one it is. It looks like the Talia shade over here is the new formula, but... Either way, we're gonna use Get Ready With Me and I'm just gonna place that on the inner portion of my lid, kinda like as if I was doing a cut crease, but not necessarily cutting the crease with the concealer, just using the shadow by itself to do the work. And because I don't wanna pull my mirror into frame, I like to use a smaller, more compact one just to see better and more precisely. Just tap that shade on. This color or shimmer shade is super pretty. Definitely like a nice subtle gold shade. Not too gold, not too intense, but it's pretty. So now that we have the shimmer shade laid down, I'm gonna now take a little bit, very little of Next, which is this one right here. And I'm gonna pop that with my JH40 brush on the outer portion of my lid. Just right here, right below that crease and just mixing it in with the shimmer shadow and just really deepening this outer part but not putting too, too much. I feel like this is adding nice definition to the eye and just really taking that outer corner to the next level. And then finally to kind of like buff and blend the outer portion of like the eyeshadow, I'm gonna take very, very little of No Joke, which is this lovely yellow tone shade right here. And I'm just gonna use that first on the outer perimeter and just be very light handed with it because it might be hella pigmented. Some yellows have good payoff, some don't, but I feel like so far this yellow is doing a great job of brightening up this outer perimeter of the eyeshadow, but also helping to blend everything more seamlessly. So that is pretty much it for the eyeshadow. I really do love this palette, so just to kind of give you guys a little bit of feedback on what I think. First of all, again, the color story, super beautiful. I do love it, and it definitely pulls me in, draws me in, makes me want to play with this palette a little bit more. As far as the formula, the pigmentation on the shadows, I feel like it's really there. Some shadows do pack a bigger punch than others, but it's like your standard Morphe shadows. I feel like it's very comparable to her first palette as far as like the way the shades operate and work and mix together. There is kick up in the pan, but I didn't have too much of any fallout on my face, honestly. I have yet to wipe my face off, and I don't have too much fallout. There's a little bit, but not too, too much, and it's mostly from like the sh shimmer in the front part of my lid. But I seem to love the palette, and I definitely plan on playing with it a lot more. I know today's look is pretty basic in kind of the same tones that I'm always using, and considering this palette has so much color to offer, like the purples um, and burgundy tones. I did play with a little bit of the burgundy, but I wanna play more so with like the purples. 
Uh, I will definitely be doing a future tutorial. Maybe I'll do kind of like a three looks in one. Let me know what you guys think using this palette, but I'm gonna put my lashes on real quick. I may or may not do wing liner, we'll see. And then we can start on the base makeup. But before I get off camera to do all of that, I do want to tell you guys that the lashes I'm going to use today are these right here. Super beautiful lashes. They are in the style Level Up, and I think they're very beautiful, very fluffy. You guys know I love me a nice dramatic lash. And these are from Unscripted Beauty. And these are mink lashes, but super excited to put these on, try these out, because like I said, Super gorgeous. Now for my favorite part, the complexion products. So we do have quite a few of things to like prep and prime the face. I'm gonna start off by using the Pure 4-in-1 Correcting Primer. If you guys seen my BoxyCharm video, you guys know I received this in one of the two BoxyCharm boxes, but I also received another one, which is why I didn't use this one. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of this today all over my face. Not too much of it though. This primer has a smell and it smells really good. Again, this does have aloe, coconut water, and probiotics. So we're just gonna rub that into our skin. It really is like a sweet, like almost like candy scent. I really did enjoy using this. It's definitely silicone free. It has like that nice moisturizer feel to it. Very hydrating, smells really good. I'm here for it. I'm also going to take a little bit of my Tatcha Silk Canvas, just because I haven't pulled this out in a while. It's kind of just been sitting in my drawer. I was at first going to use the e.l.f. Poreless Putty, if you guys have that, that's cheaper alternative to this. But I'm just going to use a little bit of this in my pores area, which is right in here. I'm just going to smooth this into the skin to kind of get that blurred effect. Not gonna lie, I probably used a little bit too much because I really just wanted to focus it right here, but we're already here. The great thing about this primer versus just using the e.l.f. one is that this does have skincare benefits in it. So I'm sure you guys know that by now, but just in case you didn't. And then finally, I'm gonna use this Farsali Skin Tune Blur little primer. You can also use this with or without makeup, but I'm gonna use it obviously with makeup. So I'm super excited to try this. I did get the little bottle just because it is a little bit on the pricey side. So I wanted to test it out first. If I like this, I will get the bigger bottle. But for now, I'm just working with the little mini. And I'm not really a big fan of the dropper on any of Farsali's products. So I'm just gonna rub this into my skin very gently. I'm not really sure how it's gonna perform on top of the Tatcha, but I'm hoping it'll be all right. If you guys didn't think I was gonna set my face, you're wrong. I'm gonna use the same powder that I always do. This is the Maybelline uh, Fit Me Loose Setting Powder in light medium. So I'm just gonna use this to set my T-zone area. And I read a comment from one of you, one of my lovely subscribers, who said they used to use a powder underneath their makeup to set their primer like I do and then they stopped but she thinks she's gonna start back up and I say girl go for it because I'm telling you I cannot do my makeup without doing this it's just like really weird for me to just go straight from primer to foundation without setting it now that our skin is nice prepped and ready to go we can start with actual complexion products starting with foundation first. And I'm gonna take my Hourglass foundation stick. This is their Vanish foundation stick. It's been out for like forever now, but I haven't used it in a while. So I'm just gonna take a couple of strokes of this. I'm also gonna be mixing in my NARS concealer, or not concealer, my foundation, the Natural Radiant. I'm gonna mix two together as I always do because the shades on these are a little tricky. So I have both of them here, Stromboli and Syracuse, mixing them together to add with this foundation right here. If you guys seen my video a while back, I used to love mixing uh, these two together just to create a more full coverage kind of look. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of this 
on my skin as well. And before we start blending anything in, I'm gonna spray my face down with a little bit of this Smashbox Love Ritual Primer Water. Again, another product I've had in my drawer. I've used it once before on my channel, but I don't really pull it out that often. And since I like to spray my foundation, just to work the product in, I figured I'd use that. So I'm just gonna use that and just use it to help me blend and buff the foundation in. I am using a brush, but I will go back in with a beauty sponge. I'm doing all of that right now. I can tell you off bat that it is allowing this foundation to just work better into my skin because if you guys have the hourglass foundation then you know the struggle to blend that out sometimes for one i like using a brush for that specific foundation but secondly i just feel like whether it's the primers underneath like the way that we prepped our skin or that spray just now just helps or is helping to blend everything in okay so that was really really nice I just really love the way that the foundation applied. It was super smooth, a really smooth process. I don't think it's been that smooth for me in a while. So something has to be working. Now we're gonna move on to concealer. And for concealer, I'm gonna be using the new Hourglass Concealer. This is their Vanish Concealer, I believe. Yes, and mine is in the shade Fawn. So definitely a brightening kind of concealer. And if you guys seen, what video was it? I wanna say BoxyCharm, where I did my concealer off camera. This is in fact the concealer in which I used. I just was impatient and I really wanted to use this. So we're gonna use it on camera today. And I'm just gonna take this as I normally would. The applicator on this concealer is definitely one that I like. It's a doe foot, but the shape of it is definitely unique. So since this is a brightening concealer, I definitely gotta make sure I'm hitting all the high points of my face just to kind of balance everything out. So to blend everything out, I did pick up this new sponge from e.l.f. It's super, super soft. It did say that it's best used with their e.l.f. Camel Concealer. I personally just feel like that's a marketing thing. If it's good for the camo, it should be good for any. So we're gonna be using this today to blend out our concealer. I really love the e.l.f. Total Face Sponge, I believe that's what it's called, the pink one. Definitely one of my favorites. Um, so I was really interested in picking this one up just because so far so good in blending this out. Not my favorite favorite, but it's not doing a terrible job. Now time to blend out the under eye. This is where it really matters. I'm gonna look up and just tap. See how brightening this is? I could probably go a shade down one, but I love the brightening effect that it gives. It's definitely a full coverage type of concealer for sure. Without a doubt, this thing is full coverage. So I really do love this concealer. I'm just pouncing over it with my beauty sponge. One good time. I do not hate this sponge. Just make sure you don't wet it too, too much. Um, it is a very nice soft sponge i'll definitely use it again to blend out my concealer for sure i just felt like it's very flexible to work with but i am going over it with my beauty sponge because that's just a habit but as far as the concealer goes i do really love it it's definitely full coverage it is a little brighter than what you guys are probably used to seeing me use here on my channel but i do like it it does appear a lot more brighter on camera than it does in person in person it brightens in just the right way but nonetheless i do like it i am going to go in with cream contour now this is from wet n wild and i'm just going to run that on the bottom of my beauty blender and then just use this to just stamp along the sides of my cheeks this is just going to create a little bit of definition on my face and so we don't look so one-toned i like doing it this way with the beauty sponge like applying the cream contour directly to the beauty sponge versus to my face like straight from here to here because i feel like i get a better blend this way and i can build it up the way that i want 
or like. I also like using my number 47, my Pro 47 brush from Sephora to do this, but the beauty sponge works just as nicely. Now we have to set everything down. We have to set the cream contour down and the concealer. I did pick up two different powders, both drugstore. This one is from Makeup Revolution, and this is their medium yellow loose setting powder. And it has like the little sifter thing in there with an R, super cute. You got a little mirror, nice and compact. Again, this is in medium yellow, so brightening, but since the concealer is a little more brightening than I normally use, I think I'm gonna go ahead and use the e.l.f. Halo Glow setting powder. And it just looks like this. So it also has one of those twisty things, which I'm not a real big fan of when it comes to setting powders. So this product is probably not my favorite as far as packaging, but this is kind of like what the powder looks like. And I'm just gonna use that same sponge that we use to blend out our concealer to dip into this. I like to tap it on the back of my hand so it's not too much, and then use this to set underneath my eyes. I am gonna drag this powder uh, on the under eye area, but as well as the T-zone, just anywhere I put that concealer. It seems to be brightening things up. I'm not baking, so I'm just pressing the powder in. I'm gonna take my little brush that I like to use to dust off powder and just dust off the excess. So now that our under eyes are set, we're gonna move on to setting the rest of our face. And I'm just gonna go in really quickly with a light layer of my Sephora Micro Smooth Powder. And this is in matte tan. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of this to set the remainder of my face. As far as like the setting powder goes, I don't hate it, I do like it. However, I am not a fan by any means of the packaging. I feel like they could definitely have done better as far as packaging, like I get it. You wanna make sure that the powder is like locked in there when people are not using it, but it's too messy and too complicated. So really quickly, let's take some shadows on our lower lash line. I'm gonna first go in with Comfort Zone and I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna smudge it along my bottom lash line. Next, I'm going to take home body and I'm going to smudge that on my lower lash line. This will like deepen up the look underneath the lash line. And then lastly, I'm going to take next, which is that dark burgundy shade that we used. And I'm going to use this flat definer brush to really press that closest to my bottom lash line. Now I'm going to take a little bit of no joke, which is that yellow shade. And I'm just gonna use that to buff everything out underneath there, just to give it a nice smooth blend and transition, just to smoke everything out. Not too much of this, cause I don't want the yellow to show up too much. For bronzer, I'm just gonna use my favorite, the MAC Give Me Sun Bronzer. I meant to pick up a new bronzer, but I kept forgetting every time I went in the store and then when I got home, it's like, oh, I was supposed to get that. So, no new bronzer today, we're just gonna use good old Mac to bronze up our cheeks, which I think will be perfect for this look anyways. If you guys are wondering, the bronzer that I did want to pick up was the palette from Physicians Formula because their butter bronzers are super pigmented and nice and creamy and just buttery. And I really love them, but there's a collab with Whaley, I think her name is, and I want to get that. So. You might see that in a new upcoming video, but for now, MAC will do. So for blush, I'm gonna use my Sephora blush palette, and I'm going to use this shade right here. Just cause it has a little bit of like orange in it, and I think it'll be perfect. I wonder if this is gonna be shimmery, like this one right here that I've used before, that's more like a highlight. Let's see. So this definitely has some shimmer in it, but it's like that nice glow from within. These Sephora blushes really be hitting it. 
It has a nice orange, faint orange, like blushy tone, but that shimmer, that shine, I'm here for it. And then last but not least, highlight. I was gonna use this ABH highlighter. This is their loose highlighter in Sunset Aurora. I think it's super pretty. What if I, hmm. All right, we're gonna use a little bit of this. I do have to open it, but it's very gold. You guys see that? It's like a very coppery gold. And I'm just really afraid of how it's gonna look on my cheeks, but maybe we'll take this and just add a little bit to that inner part of our lid. Yeah, this is more of like a glitter kind of highlight. I'm gonna take a little bit of that. I'm gonna take my brush, like a little eyeshadow brush, tap into it and press it lightly. See the difference? This one's a little bit more shinier than this eyelid. Just adds a nice little pop. Just using the Morphe setting mist just to tap over everything and just make sure everything looks nice and melted into the skin, not cakey or anything other than flawless. So I went ahead and did my lips off camera just because it's not anything new and just my traditional nude lip, you guys know me. So with that, this is the finished and final look. I will say that I don't have anything bad to say about any of the products. The one thing I will touch on is this loose highlighter right here from ABH. I feel like it's better utilized on my lids versus on my face. It's just too glittery for me and I'm more into like that subtle highlight, kind of like glow from within and this right here is very glittery. So. I feel like it's perfect just to add an extra pop onto the eyes, but not so much the face. If you're into that type of thing, it'll be perfect for you, but I'm not into that, so that's why I would only use it on my eyes. Moving on to the Jaclyn Hill palette. I wanna say that this is a very beautiful palette. Not the eyeshadow look that I thought I'd do or create using this palette for the first time, but like I told you guys in the beginning, I'm sure, I definitely plan to do a, another video using this palette, probably like a three looks one palette type situation because you can create so many different things with this. It's very, very versatile and this color story, like it needs more than one eyeshadow look. So I will be using this for sure. Also really impressed with the Skin Tune Blur from Farsali in combination with the Pure Cosmetics. A correcting primer this felt so amazing on my skin and I just really feel like all of these things combined together really helped to really blur my pores in the best way possible so it was these two on top of the Tatcha but the Tatcha isn't a new product but love 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 these and again we'll continue to use them in my makeup routine as far as like the setting powder goes it's not my favorite I'm not crazy about it it didn't do anything very impressive but I will definitely try out this uh, Makeup Revolution one that I didn't try out today in the future. Again, it is a medium yellow powder, so it will be best probably used to brighten and maybe when I'm a little bit more tan. And then finally, the last product that I believe we tried today was the Hourglass Vanish Concealer. I really do like it, it's very full coverage. I even love the level of brightness that it provided against my skin tone. Again, it's in the shade Fawn, just in case you wanna use me as a color reference. So that's the shade I picked up and I love it. So with that being said, I feel like this brings us to the end of this video. I don't have anything else to say other than I love you guys so much. Thank you all for watching and I will see you guys super, super soon in the next video or vlog, whichever one comes first.